Today we're talking about five hobbies INFJs love but keep hidden. INFJs are unique, we all know that. And so therefore our hobbies are unique as well. And because of this uniqueness, we very often don't share them with others. Not even because we're ashamed of them, but because we feel like nobody could have such a joy for them as we do. And so throughout our life, we've done them continuously. We probably do them every day sometimes. And it's not even something we think is worth mentioning towards others. But let's talk about them today because then you're going to recognize, oh, this is something I do. And not only that, I don't share it with others I keep it hidden and then you can ask yourself okay do I need to share it with others do I want to keep it to myself in most cases you'll probably say I love doing it I don't need to share it with others I don't feel the need to express it to everybody but at the same time it's good for me to know that this is nothing I should be ashamed of and if it comes down to it I can you know share that and express it and just give people a better understanding of who I am sometimes the most important thing we can do do in order to help others understand us is to really understand ourselves and then being able to just voice that so others can see what we like to do and what makes us excited about our life because that's the way you're really going to get connection to others. We as INFJs are so good at, you know, connecting with others through their world that we don't really practice for people to understand what we like and what our hobbies are. Because believe it or not, in order to feel really understood, in order to feel really connected with people, they also have to understand us. So it's okay for us to share the things we love to do. So today we're looking into five of those INFJ hobbies. Before we get started, I want to remind you if you haven't done this so far to download the free poster on the INFJ Epic Life formula that will help you to really tap into your INFJ Epic Life potential. And if you want to take it to the next level, you want to go deep and you really want to get started right away in a big way, then get the INFJ Epic Life audio guide. Everything you need to know, you can find in the links in the description. The first hobby we're going to talk about is analyzing people we don't know. So this might be people we see on TV. This might be people that we have had close interactions with, but we have this deep desire to understand them and to analyze them, not because we want to be nosy or because we feel like we want to stalk them or anything like this, but out of pure enjoyment. We want to understand what's going on behind the facade, because guess what? That's what we're really great at. We're great at reading people. We're great at, you know, pattern recognition. We pick up bits and pieces of the information we're given. Sometimes it's by watching people's interviews. Sometimes it's by looking at what kind of music people are listening to. And all of those bits and pieces of information give us a better understanding of who that person is. We as INFJs love to do that. But of course, we don't go out and share that with people because it will sound creepy to a lot of people who don't understand it. But the thing is this, it's still something we do all the time. It's something that we love and we're not really doing something that will make another person uncomfortable. It's just the information that everybody has access to. We just pull out different information than most. And you know, this is our unique gift. This is what we love to do. And it's one of the hobbies we're probably going to do for the rest of our lives. Hobby number two, we love to pinpoint one scenario of how things are going to work out and we ignore all the rest. This has a lot to do with our first function, introverted intuition, which by default, ignores everything that has to do with extroverted intuition. It's just, you know, a trade-off. We can use extroverted intuition, but if we really lean into introverted intuition, extroverted intuition goes out of the window. What does that mean in, you know, real world talk? Well, it means we pinpoint one scenario. This is how we think things are going to turn out. And we look for proof and indications that this is true, or we look for ways how we can make it work. We're really not looking into other options, how things could develop. And so, yes, in some situations, it's important to really shift gears and to say, I'm not getting further with this. I had this image of that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's going to be. And it doesn't really get me anywhere. So yeah, let me shift gears. Let me look at what other possibilities there are. But the truth is in most cases, this approach of ours is going to get us really far. And at the same time, 
time, it is a hobby. We really have to understand that because we're not just doing this in scenarios that are, you know, life choices of ours. We do this with absolutely everything. How the day is going to turn out, how certain people are going to react to certain situations. It's really something that we love to do because that's how our mind works. We want to look at a situation and really think about how are things going to develop based on the information that I have. We're really great at pattern recognition. We're really great at foreseeing how things are going to develop. And so therefore we tap into this. It's not only something we're good at, it's something that we enjoy thoroughly. Hobby number three is tapping into other people's worlds. So this is one of those hobbies that is really hard to explain to other people because how does that sound like? Well, I tap into somebody else's world. Doesn't that feel like a stalker? Well, you know, it might sound like that, but we know that it isn't. That's the paradox about all of those hobbies. We know there's actually nothing wrong about them, but we feel like if we would share it with other people, they would not get it. So it's not so much that, you know, we should feel free to voice them. Of course we can, but it's more so let's not make this a bad thing. Let's just, you know, look at it and present it and live it out as the beautiful, you know, experience that it is, which is getting to know people, getting to know other cultures, getting to know others way of seeing the world. And this is not the same thing as we talked in number one, where it was about analyzing another person. This is about another person's emotional state. You know, we listen to the music they're listening to and have such a great sense of what they're going through in that moment. We look at how they live their life. We look at how they dress themselves, how they you know, design their apartment or whatever it may be. And it gives us such a sense of the things that bring joy to them, that bring sadness to them, you know, just a very unique way of looking at the world. And we as INFJs get a lot of joy through that because there's a lot of emotion we can evoke in ourselves just by experiencing that world you know, that others are actually living through all the time. We're like visitors from time to time and we can pick up the things we want to pick up. And so it's just on us to understand that this is a hobby. It's not something that we should do all the time and it should be our default state. Because if we do that, we really neglect the thing that will make our life, you know, really be that what we think others are experiencing. So often INFJs go through life and we think, oh, those people, you know, they really experiencing life in such a beautiful way. The way they experience this music or the way they see this art, you know, I would want to experience life like this. But, but what we neglect in that moment is that the more we focus on them, the less we actually focus on the things that would make our life so uniquely great from our own perspective. And there is a payoff to be made here. The more you focus on your own life, the more energy you put towards that, the more emotion you put into creating your own life, the less you're going to be able to tap into other people's worlds. That's something that I recognized only while I was in the process. And yes, there is a sadness to it. Yes, of course, there are some, you know, deep emotions that I just can't feel like that anymore, that I was able to feel while being around other people. Not to the same extent I was before. But the reason for that is because I'm filling up my own emotional space with the things that excite me. And so, yes, I might not experience those highs so often, but therefore I have like this solid ground. There's never this moment of, oh, my life is like this blur and I just feel those highs when I'm around people. There's always excitement in creating my life. And that's what INFJs really have the potential of doing. So really look at this from a perspective of it's a hobby. It's not something that defines me. I can tap into other people's worlds, but it shouldn't be something that I'm not willing to sacrifice in order to put emotion and energy into creating my life on my terms. I will be more focused on me and I just won't have the capacity to tap into other people's worlds as much as I used to. But this trade-off is definitely a trade-off worth making. 
Hobby number four is fixing other people's mindset issues. So as INFJs, if we think about helping somebody, we're probably not thinking about how we can help them move, how we could cook a meal for them and comfort them through that. ESFJs might, you know, think of exactly those things, for example. But for us INFJs, if we think about how we can help a person, we really think about what can we say to that person that will make them see the world differently. And guess what? Yes, this is a hobby because it's something that we love to do. It's not something that we only do because we want to be generous. It's not something that we only do because it's a skill of ours. It's something that we naturally want to do because it makes us feel good even before we tell another person. Why is that? Well, because we have the capacity to. We know how things could develop. We know how a little shift in another person's perspective could change their life, you know, to an unbelievable extent. We're really, really great at that. And because we're so great at that, we, you know, think of those things without people asking us for it, without people wanting our input for it, without them maybe even, you know, seeing a problem at all. And we're doing this very often, even automatically. We do this with people we just randomly see. And so it's important for us to understand that we have this tendency and we're going to do this because we love to do it. But at the same time, we might get overly occupied with this and it might, you know, make us really think of things in a way that, you know, doesn't make us feel good. We think about their problems, their pain pulls us down. And it gets even worse if you have people in your life who you know you could help. You know how they could fix their life, how they could turn everything around and you've told them over and over again and they're just not ready or open to receive what you have to say. And this moment we have to recognize this is in so many ways a hobby. It is also something that gives us a sense of control, but also it's a great way of escaping our own life. And particularly if we've been used to feeling negatively, you know, it's a quick fix. Oh, I felt good for a while, but this feels unfamiliar. I need to feel bad again. Okay, I'm going to focus on the fact that my friend is not listening to my advice. And this is the moment where we have to pull back and understand this isn't my life. I have a way that could help them. I have voiced it once, but then it's on them if they're ready to hear it. And if they're not ready to hear that, then let them be. Focus on creating positive changes in your life. Be an example of how you fix your life, how you improve your life. And with that, you're going to be a much bigger inspiration than continuously telling people, listen, this is what you need to do. Because you might be telling them and you might be right, but what they're seeing and what they're experiencing from you is at the same time, oh, you're also overly focused on problems, on my problems, instead of really making sure that you are good as well. So if we wanna help people solve their problems, the best way we can do this is be an inspiration. Choose a better life for yourself. Choose to make changes that improve your life and with that inspire them to make better choices for them as well. You can give them advice, you can tell them what you think, but really look at how they're reacting. Are they open to it? Do they want your input? And again, if they're not at a place where they can really take it in, allow them to do that on their terms if and when they're ready. And hobby number five is optimizing every situation. We as INFJs, we don't like to take action. That's a fact. We should take action in the things that are important to us. That's why, you know, I focus on the five pillars to an INFJ epic life because, you know, defining what the important areas are that we need to take steps in allows us to really make conscious choices how we use our physical energy. Because really taking action is not something that comes natural to us. Why? Well, because extroverted sensing is our last function. It's the last thing we want to do. So everything that we can optimize that will require less input on ourselves, that will make a safe energy, is something that we're naturally going to look into. So because of that, we've gotten really good at it. 
So it is something that we like to do. It's something that makes us feel good. And it's something that we have a lot of experience and practice in. And so therefore it has become our favorite hobby. Think about it. How often have you thought about like, how can I optimize my grocery buying experience? How can I optimize my job? How can I make it possible to really put the least amount of effort necessary to get this thing done? The pitfall of all of this is that if you stay within one area of your life and you're not really expanding your life in any way, there's just so much you can optimize. At some point you really get to a place of, I cannot optimize here anymore. Like I really made the best out of this current situation. And that's one great indicator to say, let me take on the next bigger project. Maybe it's time to get a more challenging job. Maybe it's time to expand my living experience. Maybe it's time that I start online dating. Whatever it may be, just look at it from the perspective of we're great at optimizing. Let's focus on this. No matter what you take on, if you keep this in mind, then you're going to be able to create immense results because you're not just going to be focused on reaching that result, but you're going to be focusing on the thing that is your main hobby, the thing that brings you joy, which is how can I optimize this situation? And the more you optimize, the more energy you have left to take on the next thing. Just make sure that you continuously challenge yourself and you really continuously take on something bigger and better. That doesn't mean that you have to work more. It might be that you challenge yourself to have more free time, to have more joy in your life, more abundance, whatever it may be, you deserve it. Remember, if you haven't done this so far, to download the free poster on the INFJ Epic Life Formula. And if you want to take it to the next level and kickstart your INFJ Epic Life journey today, then get the INFJ Epic Life audio guide. Everything you need to know, you can find in the links in the description. And if you want to watch another video now that is in alignment with today's topic, then check out the video you see on the screen right now. I see you in the next one. Bye guys.